that's not just some packaging. Okay, can you squeeze past? <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back. So, hasn't been quite as long as the last break that I had in between videos, but it has been a couple of weeks. I apologise for that. Um, we've had house guests the last couple of weeks um, so I haven't really had a lot of time to think about making videos but I am back with you today with a charity shop haul that I hope you will enjoy. So if you're new here I have a main channel with my husband that's Nick and Andrea Hills and this is my own channel a little spin-off from that just so that I can do some different things. I do quite a lot of thrift hauls, um, do thrift hauls talking about um, reselling and the profit that you can make on things when you thrift them to resell. Um, but I also do vlogs, a bit of home stuff as well. So if you think that's something that you might enjoy, I hope you'll think about subscribing. So as I said, I've got a little charity shop haul for you today. Nothing huge, so it's not gonna to be too long. We popped into town, we needed to drop off some parcels and we just thought, you know, while we're here, We'll walk Jeff round, we'll go in some charity shops. He loves to go in charity shops. Jeff is our dog, by the way, if you're wondering. He loves to go in the charity shops because he gets made a fuss of. They usually give him a treat. So yeah, that's one of his favorite things to do. So yeah, we had a little look around, only went in three or four and found some really nice things. So I thought I would share those with you. So first up, is this really sweet little pair of Tupperware salt and pepper pots. They're actually still full, so they need empty and then a, a good clean. Um, but the lids come off here. Be careful not to tip them up. So we've got salt there and pepper. I think they're 1970s, although they do look a bit more modern, don't they? If you know anything different to me, please let me know, but I think they're 1970s. Um, I should be able to get about 10 pounds for the pair back on those. So that's not bad for my one pound investment. I spotted this on a shelf and I thought, well, that looks a bit interesting. So I picked it up to look at. It had a sticker on the bottom and it's always a bit tricky peeling off stickers when you feel like somebody might be watching you. But um, I did try to have a little peek underneath just to see what it said. And I noticed that it said made in England. I didn't actually see the Silvac in the shop. The sticker was still on it. Um, so I hadn't noticed the Silvac, but I noticed the made in England. I noticed a little bit of the number there. So I thought, well, it's definitely vintage. It looks interesting. So it was two pounds and I thought, I'm gonna pick it up and find out something about it and hopefully it's worth reselling. It's not really my taste. I, it wouldn't be something I'd want to keep if I couldn't resell it. But you know, hopefully somebody loves it. Um, and then I got it home and I took the sticker off and I realized it was Silvac. So I was even happier with my two pound investment once I saw that it was Silvac because it turns out it's quite collectible. There are various shapes and sizes to the pebble design um, and there is a bigger planter than this. So this small size planter would go for about 10 to 15. I'm gonna aim for 15 and yeah, hope for that. Um, but yeah, I will take offers on it. So, for two pounds, I think that was a good investment on that. And fingers crossed, I get the 15. But if not, there's still a little bit of profit in it. This is probably my favorite thing that I picked up. It was again, two pounds. And it is beautiful. It caught my eye sitting on the shelf 
and I just thought, oh, that's really pretty. I like that. I love the colours, so vibrant. And then I turned it over and I noticed it said Italy on the bottom with a number, which indicates that it would be vintage Italian pottery, most likely mid-century, two pounds. And I thought, oh, a little bit excited. So I grabbed that. And yes, it's very nice. It turns out to be, now I'm hoping that I can pronounce this correctly, but I will probably won't. Um, Fratelli Fanciulacci. I'm sure one of you will spell it out and correct me on that. I'm still learning, but Fratelli Fan Fanciulacci, I think. Um, yeah, this is, Probably not one of his um, most sought after vases. Um, it should, this size should fetch about 20 to 25. So it's not masses of money, but for two pounds, it's a really good return on my investment. And I loved the fact that I picked up some mid-century Italian pottery I loved learning a little bit about the artist, about the potter. And yeah, the value that I got out of this, not just in resale value, um, was huge. So yeah, I was really, really happy to find this and it's probably my favorite thing in the entire haul. In fact, I have been battling with myself. Do I keep it, do I not? You know, that old chestnut, <sighs> I think I'm going to sell it. <laughs> this is a little cutie. Look at this. A little spaniel, I think. He was just a pound. I turned him over. Well, I picked him up because I thought, oh, he's cute. I turned him over and I saw the sticker which says John Buck, Japan. And I knew that was worth picking up for a pound. I've picked up John Buck mugs in the past and they are highly sought after. We had a giraffe mug, which did very well for us. So I thought, oh, he's highly collectible. I'm gonna give that a go. So I picked that up for a pound. And on eBay, somebody has got one listed for six pounds. And I saw that and I thought, six pounds there's only one on there i thought i'm not going to list it for six pounds it's worth way more than that i looked on etsy somebody's got one listed for 18 pounds on etsy and somebody's got one listed for a bit higher and i thought well that's more like it so i'm thinking around the 15 mark perhaps for this um yeah so that's what i'm going to try for and if he doesn't sell for that on eBay, hopefully somebody on Etsy will pick him up. Yeah, I think he's cute. Isn't he gorgeous? Right, what's next? Oh yeah. I found this little pot. It's got very sweet little daisies on it. And I picked it up because I just liked the look of it. I thought it was a very cute little design. Not sure what you'd use it for, maybe tea light holder, um, maybe just a little catch-all or something, put your keys in. Um, and then I turned it over and I saw the sticker on the bottom. Now hopefully the glare won't bleach that out and you'll actually be able to see that. And it is studio pottery. If you couldn't read it, it says Ian and Kay Wanham, handmade and hand decorated ceramics, Swaffham, Norfolk. And then if you look at the telephone number, the prefix is 07, I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't read it. <laughs> 0730, I think. But the point of me saying that is that that is a very old phone prefix in the UK 
um, it would now have a one. So it would be 01730, I think that says. Um, and that changed in 1995. So that helps me to date this. I know at least this was made before 1995. And I'm thinking, looking at the design, probably more like 80s. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, this is 1980s studio pottery. I may be wrong, it might be early 90s, but just going from the design, I would say it's probably 80s. Um, obviously, because it's a local artist, there aren't really any solds or anything listed on eBay or Etsy. Um, so it's very difficult to value. So I'm just going to take a guess, take a complete punt, stick it on for 15 with offers and see what it does. I noticed this on the shelf in one of the shops as well. I picked it up because it has that look of ladra about it. Um, but when I turned it over, it's actually St. Michael, which is vintage Marks and Spencer. I think around this sort of time, around the sort of 80s, 90s, there were lots of copies and um, figurines that were made to look like Ladro because they were so popular. And I think this is one of those, really. Um, they did a whole range of this kind of figurine around this time. But she is rather sweet. I've looked for chips or cracks. I've had a a good feel around the edges and I can't see or feel any damage so that is a massive plus. She's very delicate and it's wonderful that she's survived this long. So looking at solds I would expect to get about 10 to 15 back on her hopefully more towards the 15 than anything else but yeah obviously I will take offers she was only two pounds, so again, I've been able to learn something and yeah, hopefully somebody will pick her up and love her. So I picked these up just because I love smoked glass and I love Arcapel. There's not huge money in it. It's not going to um, make my fortune, but I do love it. So I always pick it up if I see it and it's at a reasonable price. I've got three ramekins like this, and they were £1.50 for the three. And then next to them on the shelf were these individual pie dishes, and they were marked up at £2 for the three. But the lady was lovely, and she was in love with Jeff. She was, um, giving him treats and chatting to us. Yeah, she was a really lovely lady in that charity shop. And when she was putting these through, she put those through at 150 and then she says, oh, I'll do these at 150 for you as well. So three pound for the lot. So I didn't even ask. I was quite happy to pay the two pounds. So that was really nice. She knocked off 50p for them. Now what I'm thinking of doing is I do have a souffle dish that I've had in stock for a while. It's again, not huge value, so I haven't actually listed it. So what I'm thinking of doing is adding these in with it and doing it as a bundle. Um, and I think that if I bundle in the three ramekins and the three pie dishes with my souffle dish, I'm hoping to get about 25 for the lot, which will be a much nicer return and hopefully more saleable. I love picking up studio pottery. It's one of my favorite things to buy and my favorite things to resell. So when I saw this little pig on the shelf in one of the charity shops and he was only two pounds, I thought, yes, I'm going to pick him up and find out about him. He's got a little stamp on his behind. So, I knew that I could do a little bit of a search online and try and find out about the, the potter. 
He's one of those piggy banks that doesn't have a stopper. So if you put any money in, you've either got to try and siphon it out again, or you break him. And no, I wouldn't want to break him because he's super cute. Well, actually, is he? The jury's out. Let me know. Do you think he's ugly or cute? <laughs> I think he's super cute, but I don't know. He's, he's got that look about him that um, might divide opinion. So I thought, yes, I'm going to pick him up. I'm going to find out a bit about him because that is the part that I love the most. The research, the finding out about the potters, the makers, the artists and the provenance of things, I suppose, the history of things. I, I just love learning about that and teaching myself about it as I go. So this was a perfect opportunity to be able to do that. So it turns out that this lovely pig was made by a potter called Terry Davies and the stamp on the bottom indicates it's Cooper Studio Pottery. So Terry Davies was a potter at Cooper in the 70s. He's gone on since to do work in other places, but during the 70s he was at Cooper and he made a variety of different animal money boxes like this, all very different. Just looking through the, the various different animals that he's made and that I found for sale, some of them are absolutely adorable. So you can see why his work is very collectible. This pig should be worth about 15 to 20 pounds. And hopefully it will go to a collector. So we don't always thrift just to resell. We thrift for ourselves as well. We have a list of things that we're on the lookout for. Um, and we buy clothes and homeware for ourselves. And since we've moved house, most of what we've bought is secondhand and has been found at boot sales or charity shops, etc. So one of the things I've been looking for recently are curtains that actually fit the windows in this house. And at the top of our stairs, we were left some curtains. So that, that's been good. They've, you know, they've done the job, um, but they're very dark and they're really not to our taste. So we've been looking for a replacement for those. And one thing about living in a cottage is that, as you notice, the ceilings are a lot lower and therefore the windows are a lot smaller. Um, so a lot of the curtains that I've picked up for stock and tried against the windows have turned out to be too long. Um, and I'm not very good at sewing, so taking them up is a bit of a challenge for me and one I keep putting off. So I currently have some curtains on this window which are too long for it um, and I just leave them like that. <laughs> so <laughs> They look a bit odd but um, it's one of those things that you think one day I'll get round to that um, and you put it at the bottom of your list every time. I'm sure you've all got something like that that you put off because you think yes I'll get round to that one day and it always goes to the bottom of the to-do list. Let me know what it is for you. For me, it is curtains or sewing or mending anything. So yeah, the pile grows. Anyway, back to the point. <laughs> I've been looking for curtains and finding that length of curtain for the windows is tricky, it's very difficult. So we spotted these curtains while we were out charity shopping and I immediately noticed the pattern and thought, I know that, it's William Morris. I didn't know the name of the design, but I knew it was a William Morris design. Turns out to be Golden Lily. Um, there were £3.50 A curtains, so £7 for the pair. Still a bargain, huge bargain. The lady in the shop, same lady that I was talking about, really lovely, really chatty, she held them up for us so that we could see the length. And I thought, do you know what? I actually think they might do the job. I thought to myself, I'm gonna buy them anyway because 
being as they're a William Morris pattern, they've got some resale value, um, even at seven pound for the pair. I think I could definitely sell these. Um, but yeah, I thought I would take a chance on those. They're just the right sort of colouring for our cottage with the greens and the terracotta in the flowers matches the um, colourings of our tiles on the floor. They're ideal in so many ways. So we bought them, I got them home and yes, they are perfect. They are a little bit wide. One curtain does actually reach all the way across, but it doesn't seem to matter. At the moment I put one curtain up just to see how it would look. I didn't put this one up yet because I wanted to show you, but I will insert a clip of the curtain on the stairs just so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, it really does match the colouring. It's the ideal length. They are perfect. They lift the space. The dark curtains that we had there are gone. These are so much lighter and brighter and prettier and it just really, yeah, lifts and brightens the space. And I couldn't be more thrilled with these. They are absolutely gorgeous. So yes, the universe directed me towards them that day and I found a lovely pair of curtains for the top of the stairs. So all I need to do now is find a pair of curtains that will fit this space here and maybe a door curtain or two as well because it's quite drafty and we do need a curtain at the bottom of the stairs the doorway at the bottom of the stairs just to stop the the heat from going up so we can keep it warmer in the kitchen and the, at the dining room so um, putting it out there in the universe I need curtains that will fit these spaces please thank you <laughs> But anyway, I'm absolutely thrilled with these. So yeah, seven pounds for William Morris curtains. Can't go wrong. So that's everything that I found on that particular day, just going out and about for a couple of hours. Um, but I have put aside a couple of things that we did show on our main channel on one of our Sunday lives. And um, we picked these up on a different day when we went out charity shopping but I've since researched them and I just thought you might be interested to see how much I'm thinking of selling them for. So the first thing is this, which I at first said, I think is a dressing table tray. I certainly think you could use it as such, um, but having researched, most people are calling them sandwich trays. Um, yeah, so I will probably use both of those keywords when I list. So sandwich, plate, um, and dressing table tray. I paid three pounds for it. At first I thought it was chance glass because I've picked up very similar chance glass pieces in the past. Um, this particular shape with the gold trim. And I thought, oh, that looks like chance glass. But I'm not sure now. Um, it might be Fiesta Ware because I've seen some similar trays that have been listed as Fiesta Ware. So if you recognise the pattern, please let me know. I couldn't find anything identical. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure on the brand, which is going to be tricky to list. So I think I'll list as vintage, sandwich plate, um, dressing table tray, and then maybe put chance fiesta wear at the end, just so that it picks up that search. If anybody's, you know, searching for chance glass or fiesta wear, because I'm not sure which. It could be a different brand altogether. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. It might need a bit more research, but I have done a Google search. I've done a Google photo search. I've searched on eBay and Etsy. Cannot find anything that is identical, only things that are similar. So yeah, 
I'd appreciate the help if you've ever seen that design before. Um, and then lastly, as I say, it was only a couple of things I picked up when we were out and about the other day. Um, I picked up these stacking mugs for 3 95 I think that says, yeah, 3 95 um, Their next set of six, the design really caught my eye and the colour, because the colour, the, that kind of green is very in at the moment. And next stacking cups and Mark Suspense's stacking, stacking cups generally do quite well. So I thought it was worth a go and I'm thinking of listing them for about 20. Um, again, doing research, I only found a set of three in this design. Somebody had obviously split the set and was selling three. Um, and I think they were selling them for about 10. So I'm going to go for about the 20 and put offers on it. Okay, that's the end of the haul. Just a small haul today. Um, yeah, for me, definitely the pig and the Italian vase are my favourites. But let me know what yours are because I'm always interested to know. We're off to a jumble sale this weekend, so not sure if it will be as good as the last jumble sale we went to, but I'm looking forward to it all the same. Until next time, take care everybody. Happy thrifting. See you soon. Bye.